projectile motion. So our goals for this session are the following. So for projectile motion, that's motion under the influence of gravity alone, we're going to determine some general equations for three different things. The maximum height reached by a projectile, the time of flight, that's the time it spends in the air, and the range, which is the horizontal distance traveled. So we'll start with the time of flight. Start thinking about that. Quick question. So we have these trajectories shown in the picture for A, B, and C. Which projectile has the longer time of flight? Our assumption is the projectiles are only influenced by the force of gravity. Okay, so think about which one you think, A, B, or C. We'll start by thinking about maximum height now. Let's derive an equation. So we're going to start with this general constant acceleration equation, and we'll make the following definitions. Up is positive. Y initial, where we start from, we'll just call that zero. At maximum height, the vertical component of the velocity, Vy, is zero. It was positive moving up before that, negative moving down afterwards, and Vy is zero at maximum height. Also, the acceleration is only that due to gravity, and down is in the negative direction, so Ay is negative g. Okay, with all of that, we'll solve for y max. So we're just going to solve for y in our equation, which, when you rearrange, turns into this, Vy squared minus V initial y squared over 2Ay. But, Vy is zero, so Vy squared goes away. Ay is minus g, so we can boil it down to minus Viy squared over minus 2g. Of course, the minus signs cancel out. So it's Vy, Viy squared, the square of the initial y velocity, over twice the acceleration due to gravity, the magnitude of it. Okay, so the maximum height depends only on these two things. What planet you're on, because that determines the value of g, and also only the y component of the initial velocity, the x component of the initial velocity, is completely irrelevant. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. Now we'll think about the time it takes for a projectile to reach maximum height. Now we're going to use this constant acceleration equation, Vy is V initial y plus Ayt. We will make the same definitions we did previously. Up is positive. Vy equals zero at maximum height, and Ay again is minus g. Rearrange and solve for time, time to reach maximum height. Okay, so it's Vy goes to zero, so it's minus Viy over Ay, but of course the acceleration in the y direction is negative g. The negative signs cancel out. The time to reach maximum height is the y component of the initial velocity divided by the value of g. G is a positive quantity here. Once again, the time to reach maximum height, just like the maximum height itself, depends on two things, the same two things. The value of g, which depends on what planet you're on, and the y component of the initial velocity. Okay, what about the whole motion? How long is it at? does that take? Well, if the projectile starts and ends at the same height, then the going up part of the trip takes exactly the same time as the going down part of the trip. Okay, there are mirror images of one another. So in the special case of the projectile starting and ending at the same height, we can say the total time is twice the time to reach maximum height, so that is 2 Viy over g. Okay, so what do we learn now? If we go back to this picture with the three trajectories, we can say they reach the same maximum height. What does that imply? Well, they have the same acceleration due to gravity, so if they reach the same maximum height, they must have the same initial vertical velocity. But the same initial vertical velocity means the same time of flight. So it's equal for all three of them. Okay, it doesn't matter how far they go horizontally. What matters is they all go the same height vertically. That all takes the same time. So boiling it down, the higher it goes, the longer it takes. If they all go to the same height, they all take the same amount of time. And we're back to the independence of x and y. 
just focus on the vertical motion, horizontal motion doesn't affect the time. Okay, what about speed? Which one was launched with the highest speed? Well, we can say the initial velocity, initial speed, sorry, is the square root of vix squared plus viy squared. We've just realized that that's the same for all three, viy is the same for all three, but the x component of the initial velocity of c must be larger than for the other two because c went further horizontally, so vi is bigger for projectile c. Okay, maximizing range. Again, the projectile lands at the same height from which it was launched. At what angle do you shoot it so it goes the furthest horizontally? Okay, the horizontal distance between the launch point and the landing point is the range. Okay, so what's our equation for range? Pretty simple, delta x is v initial x times t, where t again is the time of flight. If we increase the launch angle, what happens to vix? What happens to t? Well, one of them goes up, one of them goes down. So, who knows what happens to range? It actually depends on where you start. Let's think about this some more. Again, this is a special case that equation, this equation applies only when we land and launch from the same point, same height. Look at this triangle. Here's vi, along the hypotenuse. vi cos theta is vix, vi sine theta is vi y. So vix times 2 vi y over g, you can write as 2 vi cos theta, vi sine theta over g. Using a trig identity, 2 cos theta sine theta is the same as sine 2 theta, you can boil it down to range delta x is vi squared over g times sine 2 theta. Now, sine of 90 is maximum. Sine 90 is 1. That's the biggest sine can be. So 2 theta is 90. Theta is 45 degrees. Maximizes the range. Also, this equation will tell us that angles of theta and 90 minus theta produce the same range. Okay, so in our question here, which angle do you launch at to get the maximum range? That is, in fact, 45 degrees. And that's, again, only when you land at the same height that you launch from. Okay, so that's a good introduction to various projectile motion equations.